addicts from before I was even born, way into their you know middle school years they started in their addiction, and so I grew up in it. Um, my mother, um, when I was ten, she got to the point where she could no longer be a mother, and my father ended up raising us. Um, we we call him a functioning addict. Um, he was able to raise all four kids on his own with the help of our grandparents, of course, but um, I had to grow up really fast to help him in the mother role of my three younger brothers. So it was, our whole life was basically surviving. Um, we never stayed in one place for more than two years. We were constantly moving. Um, I learned to adapt um, as often as I needed to when a crisis happened, which happened often. It was just a constant line of chaos um, due to um, his addiction. You know, he was a hard worker. Um, he was a great father. Just his addiction was always what kept him going. And of course, um, when you're in active addiction, a lot of things take the back burner. Um, so a lot of times we solely relied on our grandparents to help feed us or um, he was barely making rent. Um, a lot of his, you know, he made really good money, but a lot of his money went to drugs, unfortunately. Um, so for 15 years, my mother was in and out of our lives, in and out of prison, in and out of rehab. Um, and, you know, of course, it had a lot of a harder effect on my younger brothers. Um, I was very resilient. I was able to adapt and adjust pretty well for the most part. Um, my younger brother, his first um, trip to juvenile was at the age of 13. He just now got out in March. Um, he's been in and out of prison and juvenile boys school for the last seven years. Um, he just was not able to adjust to the, the life that we had to grow up in. Um, another brother of mine uh, struggled with a heroin addiction. He's been three weeks clean now. Um, thank, to, thank God to the Marion County court system putting him on home detention and random drops that has helped him get him to some type of stability. But uh, he's been in and out of rehab. Um, he was in Salvation Army, Pathways, Fairbanks. Um, so that's just been a whole kind of a overall of how addiction had just ran rampant in our family. Um, my father was an alcoholic severely. Um, he ended up dying in his 50s due to his alcoholism. Um, so I just, you know, I grew up to it. It was very normal to be up around drugs and addiction. Um, I didn't really think too much of it. That's just the normality. Um, however, when I got to be 18, um, I was with a guy in high school for three years. He had a pill addiction. Again, that was normal for me. I didn't think anything of it. Um, but it got to the point where he just got really bad. Um, and he ended up dying of an overdose when I was 18 years old. Uh, at that point, I went through a six month, you know, time where I relied on drugs to help me through that period. Um, I was, I could have easily went in that direction and became a full blown addict. Um, I was right there um, on the edge about to fall. Um, thankfully, I have a grandmother who uh, stands strong in her relationship with Christ and helped me out of that pit that I was in. And at the age of 19, I was able to uh, choose a different path. Um, I wanted to break the family tradition and I decided to change my life and start focusing on something better there had to be something better right you know you can't just live that life your whole entire life um, so I went my own separate way I kind of left my family behind um, only by arm's reach I was always there if they needed food or um, I always had to come to save them whenever my dad couldn't take care of my brothers properly but I was I was fortunate to not go in that direction. Uh, I end eventually got married, had children, had a family, and two years ago, um, it was January 2014, my father, his addiction just, he was no longer functioning. I mean, it just, he lost all control. He wasn't able to keep his job anymore. He was in and out of apartment buildings, um, and he, he just kind of lost it. And at that point, me and my brothers were like, we have to do something. Um, they were scared for my father's life at that point. 
um, and we had an intervention. Um, we kind of had a come to Jesus type talk and he surrendered his addiction um, and he decided to go to rehab. 45 years old, first time in recovery ever. I didn't even know what recovery really was. Um, he admitted himself into Salvation Army Adult Rehabilitation Center. Um, he was there for nine months and um, I got my father back and I'm trying not to cry. Um, my dad got 18 months of sobriety and my mom was in recovery at that point for two years. My dad was in recovery and my brother had gotten nine months of recovery. So it was amazing to see my dad, my mom, my brother all in recovery. My other brother was getting to his end of his prison term. And we thought that we had this addiction thing beat. Uh, we were gonna be a family again, <laughs> uh, which is something I prayed for from the time I was 10 years old. So this was a great time in my life with my father. Um, and he was happy. Um, just in those two years, we had a better relationship out of, you know, 24 years. Um, I was able to really enjoy my father um, during that time. And he built his relationship with his family again. Uh, you know, he built, he got a new career and he's able to um, really start building his life and people started trusting him, you know. And uh, he got his relationship with God back again, which was the bigger point in his life um, was that. But 18 months after he celebrated his 18 months sobriety, um, he got disconnected from his program. Uh, the depression started kicking back in. He kind of lost connect of going to church um, and just kind of came to a point of being complacent, just wasn't working towards anything anymore. And the relapse started and um, we all kind of knew about it and, um, you know, but he hit it a lot more than what, there was a lot more going on than what we knew about. And because of his shame and guilt, uh, he couldn't reach out for help. He tried to keep on hiding it because he always said, I'm never gonna go back, I'm never gonna go back. I got my sobriety, I'm gonna keep going forward. Um, and unfortunately, recovery just does not work that way. You have to keep on moving or you're gonna backslide and fall. Uh, and that's exactly what he did. Uh, six months after his relapse, um, my dad was out riding his motorcycle, which was ironic because that was his 18 month gift to himself. He always wanted a Harley Davidson and he finally bought himself one for his 18 month sobriety. Um, but six months later, he was on his motorcycle under the influence and crashed and he, he died on, um, by forced trauma. Um, some of you guys may have seen it on the, on the news. It was there on uh, Smith Valley in six or 37. Um, and I was coming from recovery coach training, which is, um, the line of events is crazy, but I was kind of, I got out of recovery coach training early and I was driving down 37, which I would never come down from that direction. And, uh, he, and I seen the accident 10 minutes after it happened. Um, so I was responsible for calling the family. Um, I was responsible for getting the funeral arrangements together. And uh, I always had to be the strong one. I always had to pick up everybody's pieces when things were falling apart. Um, and I don't regret that life because that's made me who I am today. But at his funeral, I really wanted to capture his addiction I didn't want to just speak on the good parts of my father because I knew there was going to be many other recovering addicts there who needed to hear his story. Um, and that would have been the ultimate purpose for my dad's life was to share to share a story and save another addict like himself. Um, so I really wanted to capture that and uh, I think I did a great job, which is why I'm here. <laughs> but, um, you know, after I lost my father, um, I really wanted to really put myself and commit myself to recovery and addiction and really get my hands on because uh, my family didn't know about recovery and if someone would have reached out and kind of 
introduced recovery to us a long time ago, you know, maybe our life would have been different. And there's so many people out there suffering addiction and family members don't know what to do. We, it, it's just as hard, it's just as hard as a family member it is, as it is the addict. Um, we don't know who to turn to. We don't know if we're enabling, if we're, in, if we're helping. Um, we're just kind of lost in the addiction with them. You know, it is a family disease. Um, it doesn't just take the attic down, it takes everybody down that loves them. Um, so I really wanted to not just help addicts, but I wanted to help them get the family um, more involved with recovery and kind of te teach them what recovery is and what it entails. And it's an ongoing process. You can't stop. Um, and that's half the problem in addiction. People, uh, they think that once they get some sobriety time, they think they, they got it beat and, you know, they have it. Um, and that's the first sign of relapse right then and there. Um, they're always gonna need their recovery. They're always gonna need to be connected to a, a, a program. Um, and they can't lose sight of that. The recovery has to become their first part of their life. Um, unfortunately, my father, he didn't have a second chance of getting recovery, you know. His first shot of recovery was all he had. He didn't know that after he relapsed, that was going to be it. Um, and I try to tell like the clients that I work with, when you have the opportunity to recover, you have to take it and you have to take advantage of it because you don't know if that relapse is going to be the end of your life. Um, you may not have that second chance of recovery. Um, and it's a beautiful gift. I. I worked at Salvation Army after my father left. I worked there for a year. Um, it, it really, you know, I wasn't in school. I took, I was off to school for five years at that point, and I didn't know, I didn't know what I was gonna do, so I just became a stay-at-home mom. Um, but after my dad got into a rehab, I was like, wow, this is what I wanna do. This, you know, watching these guys come in and just transform their lives. And you know, it's a six month to a year program. So you see these guys come from the streets and you see their family start coming on Sundays to visit them and you see their kids just, you know, it's just a beautiful um, transformation that you get to be a witness of. And uh, it, so I decided I wanted to go back to school to become an addiction counselor. Um, and I've been very fortunate to see many people in recovery um, through my father, my mother, my brother, people that they have came in contact with in recovery and just see a lot, many people just change their lives. And I've learned that recovery is possible, um, which was something I never knew was possible before. Um, I just thought addiction was the end of their story and that's it. Um, but I have learned that that is not true. Uh, so I, I learned to have my dad's life live through me um, and his story to be shared to others. Um, Cause that's what's gonna keep my dad's memory alive. Um, and it's just so great, you know, to see people actually working in this field and seeing how many are here. Cause sometimes you feel like you're in this battle alone um, you feel like you're never gonna make headway into this addiction thing. You feel like, you know, it's always gonna be there and it's always gonna be this like thorn constantly at your side. Um, and if more people can come together and realize that if you just save one person, if you just help one person, that's one father being restored to his family, that's one mother uh, being reconnected with her children, one father or son um, having that relationship with his mom and dad again. And, uh, just one is, is worth it all. Um, I can never repay back Salvation Army for giving me my father back for those um, two years, uh, which makes losing him a little bit better because if I would have lost him two years before that, I would have not had any good memories of my father. It would have been nothing but sadness. And um, But I see my father sober and that's the greatest gift uh, that these these treatment programs and AA and NA that's the greatest thing they could have gave to me is the chance to see my father sober and happy again um, and those two years was well worth it um, it was unfortunately that we lost our father and he wasn't able to get back into recovery but um, 
at least I got those two years. My my dad, my father died, and I, and I know he, I know he died with some type of peace in his heart um, because he did fight his addiction at one point. You know, he he did give he did get up and say, hey, I don't want to be in this addiction anymore. And he, uh, that was a strength. And I always say some of the strongest people I've ever seen in my life are people in recovery. Um, that is a battle. And uh, I don't know how they do it. <laughs> um, but if you are a recovering addict, uh, all props to you and keep on doing what you're doing. You guys are amazing people. Um, and, uh, you know, so I'm, I'm fortunate to be here today. Uh, you know, in the absence of my, my mother, I had my father. And now in the absence of my father, I have my mother. Uh, my mother lives with me and she takes care of my two girls so I can follow my dream um, and be a full-time employee, full-time student. And uh, knowing that my kids are being taken care of her, and she kind of got her second chance of being a mother again. Um, and we always call her Mommy Mima because she's like a second mom to my kids. And uh, I'm blessed to have her in my life. Uh, we are, you know, encouraging my brother to keep on going, and I know one day he will. Um, one day he'll have a year claim too. Um, and I, I just, you know, it's hard to, I don't even know what else to say, but it, to encourage you guys to keep doing what you're doing because uh, it, it works. It, it does help people and it helps family members um, give them a, a an option um, to help their, their, their suffering addict. You know, sometimes we feel like we have no answers um, and people like you and I, uh, we have answers for them. Um, but yeah, I guess that's all I have today. But thank you for allowing me to be here and share my father's story and hope that it can be passed on to somebody else that can benefit from it. So thank you. Thank you.